geez, I go to the bathroom and I come back and there's all these people waiting to hang out. <laughs> That's awesome. So good to see you all. So, hey, Michaela. I remember you, we, didn't we work together in, uh, we were gonna work, we worked in that, on that event in LA together, didn't we? We talked about, it. we were gonna do it. Yeah, we, we had, we were planning an event together for March 23rd, 2020. That's right. <laughs> so we did not get to do that event, but no, it was, it was still fun to plan it. <laughs> yeah. And I, but now I get to follow you and see what your, your life is like in LA. So it's, lots of changes this last year for you. Yep. <laughs> Well, nice to see you. Well, this is just meant to be an informal hi. How are you? Hi, Clark. Nice to see you. Um, and if you want, if you want to introduce yourselves, you're welcome to do that. Um, and you don't have to do it in chat. You can do it, you know, out loud. It's not meant for you to have to listen to me talk for 45 minutes. I wasn't prepared to. It's really very informal. We've got some videos that we'll share um, that are. Um, some of our elected representatives um, who have been in celebration of arts, culture, and creativity month, which is cool. Um, I want to just recognize Jessica Monahan, who's here today, who's the behind the scenes doing all the putting together of all the panels and the tech and everything else, and is doing a fantastic job. It's nine sessions in a short, you know, time frame. Um, but we're nothing if we're not ambitious at Californians for the Arts. I can assure you of that. <laughs> Um, as maybe, you, so how many of you were in the opening panel? Are you guys there? Maybe just thumbs up or however you want to shout out, hand signs. Um, yeah, cool. And then I just came from the youth empowerment panel. Did any, was anyone at the arts intersection panel? How was, was that good? How was it? Was it, in, yeah? Yeah, it was really interesting. Um, it's, it's nice. I mean, there was a lot of different things that they were talking about. So it was kind of nice to see everyone's perspective of how arts have been helpful during COVID. That's great. Yeah, I look forward to going back. So just so you know, everything is recorded. And since you've registered, you'll get a link. And so you can go back if you want <laughs> um, and watch more. I, I'm like, there's so many amazing little tidbits of great quotes from brilliant people that I just like, I need an intern to just sit and watch the whole thing and the entire day and pull quotes out because uh, there's so many good nuggets. I, I just came from the youth panel and it was brilliant and moving where all half of us were crying. Um, and uh, cause there was some amazing like powerful uh, youth who participated in the panel and shared how they use art to affect change in their communities and um, in Inland Empire and Sacramento and San Diego and um, some beautiful videos and sharing of art that were quite moving. Um, is anyone actually eating lunch? Yes, good, Paul's, Paul's nodding yes. Good, Paul. I know I just put something in the microwave, but um, maybe we'll run a video. Although, you know what happens if I run the microwave? I don't know if any of anyone else has this problem, but it actually um, makes my connection insecure <laughs> did we learn this during covid that the microwave and the internet don't go well together this was an this was this was a first for me um so yeah so again this is meant to be informal everybody can join in and talk you can turn your video off if you don't want to be seen if you're chewing um that sort of thing and um jessica do you have you have a little deck you wanted to i do i just didn't want to you don't have to technically start till 12 45. oh okay well, 12.45 is the start time, so I thought we could keep it really casual until then in case people are rolling in. So I will put up the opening slide deck, but um, no Julie, if you want to go and start your microwave, now might be a great time. And if you can actually make me the co the actual host, yes, then if you get instability, it will not, I, I will not have instability, will not run the microwave. Yeah, I actually ran the microwave already. I just okay. have to get it out, but yes, I will still make you the a host. Um, <laughs> Happy to do that because you're also sharing anyway. Right. Thank you. What's your question, Michaela? If we did not register, can we still get a link to watch it? Yeah, I mean, it's 
easier if you register for it so then we can but if it's already passed yeah i mean likely we'll just put it all on our web page we were just trying to you know like we all do data capture yeah um, to figure out who's showing up it's partly is also for funders honestly you know like how many people are coming on today that sort of thing so those are the things that we're working on um i would love to know who's here so why don't you guys just if you don't mind if i can call you out and you can tell me who you are and where you're coming from, or you could add it into the chat, whichever you prefer. I'd love to know who's who's joining me for lunch today. Um, so Clark, why don't you tell us who you are? And uh, uh, I'm going to pick on you first. You've done mute. Okay, sure. Um, I'm here in Palm Springs. Uh, I am the president of a theater company called Desert Performs. I am also with an alliance um, that uh, other theaters and uh, other uh, live performing organizations have formed back in probably April, May of last year uh, to just share ideas, share what's going on, what do we do, how do you get grants, all those kind of things. So I am uh, part of that. Uh, I'm also part of the Los Angeles Alliance. I'm a guest to participate in that to see what's going on in LA. So I report back to the folks here in the desert what's going on. And um, we're trying to plan a show for next next uh, season. Our season here starts in November. You know, guess where I'm going tomorrow? I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to Palm Springs. I'm coming down. Yay! I'm trying to take a vacation. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's just not going to happen. But um, <laughs> but I'm going to try. Um, okay, I'm going to pick on Paul Roach. Welcome to the uh, Southland Advance. I'm a little bit uh, west of Clark. I'm at the American Museum of Ceramic Art, which is a small niche museum in the city of Pomona on the eastern edge of LA County. And I'm about five minutes west of John Machado, who is also in here, um, who runs the arts area. Excellent. Well, then, thank you. I love ceramics, number one. I, I, I used to own an art gallery, so I have a lot of I have a lot of art in my in my home. Um, so why don't you, you know, popcorn it off to John then, John Machado. Introduce yourself, are you there? Or is hey, Julie. Lunch? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Um, yeah, so my name's uh, John Machado. I'm a professor of art history and arts management at a community college down here, JP College. And then I'm the uh, CEO president of the arts area. So we're an uh, equitable economic development organization. We work in San Bernardino Riverside and a little bit of uh, East LA County with Pomona where Paul is located. And Are you ready? I feel like maybe yeah. they're on that uh, border of being LA County but not included in downtown LA. But that's fine. Get you that okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have fiscal sponsorship, um, well, uh, advocacy, working in a few different areas. So about five years um, been around now. I I think I've seen you on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah, we've been um, at a few events together before. So yeah, yeah, nice around. to see you again. And um, thank you for the work that you're doing down there. I, I, I wanna know, I wanna know more. <laughs> I would like to know who John Cariotis is. Is he here? Cause he said he would, he would review all of our transcripts. <laughs> is he still here? Good afternoon, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Well, you oh, good. Who are you, John? Hi, I'm John Cariotis. Um, I live in Salton City, which is Imperial County, um, a quite rural area. We It is 35 miles north to Indio, uh, 45 miles north to Palm Springs, and it is 75 miles to Calexico, Mexicali, and the Mexican border. Um, Salton Sea is the largest inland body of water in the United States, and it is what I see the sunrise over every morning. Um, I am here as part of a newly forming nonprofit uh, called Cresting Phoenix. We are an art and entertainment guild where we do uh, Renaissance actor acting as uh, a pirate hunting troupe. Uh, we work with children and games and education about what pirates and piracy and the history of the 1710 to 1720 era. Wow. 
Wow, that's um, it's that's really interesting. That's such a niche, and I, I love also that we're learning about the geography of California because it's so massive. <laughs> so um, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to pick on uh, Angie. Pleasure. Angie Orozzo. Hi. When, do you want to introduce yourself? But just have to unmute if you don't mind. I think you're still muted. I see you talking, but it's not working. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> I'm an artist in Chula Vista, and um, I've been, um, I guess, connected with the California for the arts and stuff. And I guess since the pandemic started, I've been kind of focusing, I've, you know, on just building, building um, my art group, uh, doing community research with, uh, not research, but like um, soliciting the artists to get together and do activities and stuff. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, welcome. And if you get a chance to join us at five o'clock tonight, um, Las Cafeteras um, will be really inspiring in terms of what they've been doing during COVID and actually um, how they've actually kind of shifted their business model, but have been quite successful in also doing things that they care deeply about. So, um, yeah, just kind of like being involved with the community and, and using the social media. And um, I think it's just bringing us closer together because we have more time in our hands. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely switching my focus from you know, trying to maintain or working a full-time job to just dedicating myself to the arts. And um, I've been mural painting, hosting, um, how do you say, uh, little art shows, get-togethers, and um, little things like that. That's terrific. Well, welcome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Nancy, nice to see you again. Hey, Julie. Great to see everyone. I'm here in West Los Angeles. I live near Tongva Springs, right by University High School. I am a teaching artist. Julie, I've got two questions for you. I'm hoping you might know the answers right offhand. Um, I've been doing some research work on Senate Bill 628, and I know part of arts funds come from license plates for the arts, and I also know that there's a checkbox on your California Franchise Tax Refund box. Do you happen to know currently how much funding comes from those? Mm, I could tell you in a second. It's in a folder over here. Okay, um, well, I'm glad you have your folder, and I don't mean to take everyone's time, but these are important not sources of revenue. I, I can tell you it's not significant. Most of the funding comes for the Arts Council, the California Arts Council, right. from the general fund, from the general budget. Um, what we're hoping for in our billion dollar ask is actually also the funding to come from the federal government's investment, you know, the ARP right. funds, because there's $26 billion coming into the state. And uh, that is obviously, um, and is meant for the recovery. And so obviously we're trying to make the point that we are a critical piece of every community's recovery, not only economically, but socially and emotionally. Um, in, in terms of our impact and for our youth and for jobs creation and everything else. And so um, we're getting some traction, which is great. We didn't get laughed at, which was even, you know, wonderful. We didn't get sort of told like, what are you nuts? Because, you know, let's be honest, the arts have never been really capitalized. And it's never been particularly um, in the United States. You know, we don't invest in the arts here. We invest, um, so, you know, that's something that we're, I think, as you heard maybe in the opening conversation, I think that's really what we're all trying to shift at this moment in time, because if there's ever been a chance for us to, for people to recognize that they missed it, it was this last year, <laughs> um, and that we, they actually need us. Um, so it's not in my research file. Okay, so well, no, no harm, no foul. I know they're smaller amounts, and I know in the past, those would have been bigger amounts to us, so I'm hoping in the future, they'll still contribute, but at yeah, a small level. Yeah, it's definitely, it, but it's definitely not sort of, you know, what you really want is for it to be something that, you know, budgets, budgets are uh, an example of prioritization, right? And what we value. And so if your community determines that the arts are critical, you're gonna see you in a budget. You're gonna see it in your city budget, your county budget, your state budget, federal budget. 
So you do want it actually to be something that comes out of the general budget because you're, it's your, it's your money. Yes. <laughs> it's taxpayers dollars. So we get to determine how it should be spent. But if we don't show up and say that arts should be funded, they're not going to naturally offer that. <laughs> you know, we're, we have to be, we have to be super loud in our voices. Um, but I, I think I found it. So I think I did general funds, special funds. Oh, it's not, you know, it's like one of these I'm trying to. Please raise. don't worry about it. I, I just <laughs> thought if you happen to know those figures offhand, it would be helpful. And at okay, some here, point. No, I do, I do have it. I do have it. It's, um, 2 million for the graphic design license plate account. And then keep arts and schools fund, which is the tax is like 250,000. It's pretty small. Okay, very and helpful to know, from, thank you. And Yeah, and we get from the NEA about a million dollars a year. Um, but the bulk of the money is from the general, the general California budget. Thank you, appreciate you everyone's patience. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone's yeah. got an interest. Thank you so much, Julie. Yeah. Hey, Valerie. Julie. How are you doing? How's it going? It's fun to Valerie's see you. My, nice to see you. Valerie is one of my neighbors, uh, lives here in uh, where I live, which is Nevada City, California. Hey, Lauren and Victoria. How nice to see you guys. It's hard to see who's here. So Lauren is the consultant to the Senate Committee on Arts um, and Lauren and I work really closely and she works for Senator Allen. So we've been working together on Senate Bill 628, California Creative Workforce Act, which got through Senate labor five to zero. No uh, opposition, bipartisan support, which was fantastic. So hi, Lauren. Um, and Victoria, our board president is here. Hi, Victoria, how you doing? Coming from San Diego. You guys are welcome to unmute. You don't have to be muted. This is meant to be casual, not meant for me to be talking the whole time because you get you'll be tired of me talking victoria has to hear me and lauren both hear me talking enough i'm sure <laughs> yeah we're just joining at the hip julie <laughs> hello julie <laughs> i had to find myself on this you know scroll and find myself but uh, there you are oh, there great you job are. so far great um, panels great day yeah i don't know i went to the youth panel and it was like had us all in tears it was beautiful um I see Sarah, Sarah, who, Russin, you, you and I you emailed me and you're like, how can you be responding to emails at the same time as you're doing in a whole day convening? And I'm like, well, I think if you run a nonprofit arts organization, you know how to run, you do lots of multitasking. That's what we do. Nice to see you. Welcome. And you're from Los Angeles? Yeah, we're the, uh, LACE is the longest running artist space in LA, contemporary artist space. So ah. over 40 years and we made it through last year. So that's super awesome. And uh, really appreciate the advocacy work you're doing. And I think when people are really busy with their day-to-day -day stuff, you, you know, it's like chipping away at getting people involved with this and that's the big challenge. And so I appreciate the work that you all do on that. Thank you. It is the big challenge is to everybody in their busy lives to add another thing, which is like also become an arts advocate. But we we really try to do as much as we can to make it easy as possible. So, you know, for example, right now we do have the one billion dollar budget ask out there and we're doing a, a grassroots campaign letter. I think we've got about three thousand letters so far sent in. Um, so uh, I'll put that maybe someone on my team can put that in the chat. Matt, I see you. And um, maybe you could put that letter campaign in the chat for me. And um, Matt, I was just saying that Youth Empowerment Panel was fantastic and congratulations. The, the today's convening is definitely a group, a real serious group effort between our staff, which is very small. I'm the only full-time um, uh, employee of Californians for the Arts. We have Matt, who um, is our programs manager, who was hired to work specifically on arts, culture, and creativity month. And he has been hitting it out of the park. So thank you, Matt, for all the excellent work you've been doing all month. Um, we have Jade Alicia, um, and they work with us on um, assisting Matt and myself and doing a lot of wonderful um, program development as well. And they are going to be leading the um, uh, a panel this afternoon after lunch, some really excellent panels. 
Um, I see a couple more people in my frame. I can't see everyone, but um, if you want to introduce yourself, Amy, Amy Lee, do you want to say hi and tell us what you're what you do? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I'm a patient advocate after my own stage four cancer because music and dance and art really, you know, help me heal. Like I pick up my art brushes after 12 years. On the day I couldn't get out of the bed or listen to music. Um, the only movement program that I'm allowed to go to because my compromised immune system um, is at the cancer center. It's a music and movement program. Um, but if on that day I was too sick or don't have a volunteer driver, I will have no activity for several weeks. And that's kind of what inspired me to like, who in my age survived stage four cancer, had an extensive technology background. Now being educated, you know, not only myself benefit from it, but there's a ton of clinical study already behind creative arts, you know, like helping cancer patients improve quality of life, reduce anxiety, you know, helping dementia patients prevent the risk of getting dementia by 76%, cardiovascular death by 46%, right? And then we had like this whole group, all this is struggling and then healthcare has a ton of money, right? Why are we not bridging creative arts and healthcare? And I just feel like there's a mission in my life now, like after my own cancer, that being, you know, the patient advocate and also the art advocate, like, you know, figuring out how to bridge creative arts and healthcare. Um, I'm, my background is mostly in technology, don't know anything about a government policy. <laughs> um, also not as connected to the art community. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited um, about this event here and to see all the champions here. Yeah, yeah. so help me and create a movement to get Yes. <laughs> Amy, definitely send me your email and let's connect because the statistics that you know and the stories that you have are really powerful in terms of, we talked about in the opening session, if you saw about the impact of storytelling and really how uh, the arts can affect and save lives and change lives. And um, mm -hmm. that intersection of arts and health is, is huge in terms of um, our integration strategies and looking for other aspects and buckets of funds. So um, thank you. And, and my and Matt just entered my email. Any any of you, please reach out to me. I'm um, kind of a crazy person around email. I respond really quickly, typically. So um, yeah, Matt's like nodding his head. So um, I'm, I would love to connect with you. But I want to take a moment to share a video from the Speaker of the Assembly, Anthony Rendon. Um, he is a, just a fantastic arts champion and he will be actually at our workshop today at 315 live as well. So let's just run that video real quick and I'm going to go run, get my thing out of the microphone. Hi, I'm Anthony Rendon, Speaker of the California Assembly. I was asked to talk for less than two minutes about how arts are important. I could keep talking about that for two months. Arts have always been important, but they have become even more important in the past year. Music combines our culture and our emotions and pours them into a medium we can share. Paintings express complicated ideas about life in ways that let us consume those ideas without needing to have endless philosophical discussions. In the last year, I've seen this. When the nation erupted in response to police killings, artists put their anger into tangible form. When I think of George Floyd or Breonna Taylor, I th think of how they are still alive in murals all over the country and in museum pieces by artists like Amy Sherald. During our months of lockdown because of COVID, how would we have survived without the recordings of music, without the movies, without the books that kept us inspired and stimulated when we couldn't be with our friends? Even our environmental crises have inspired artists. For Earth Day this year, I'm talking online with an artist who used the industrial lead contamination of my district in her artworks. The message is that we can do something about it. Arts are important economically, that's for certain. The last year, however, has shown us how important they are for our spiritual and political state, not just our economic state. I support the arts because the arts support all of us. Right, how awesome is that? How awesome is yeah. that? That's the speaker <laughs> of the assembly um, here in California. He's a yeah. massive um, art supporter, completely believes in the transformational power of the arts. He, it's been said that after he retires, he wants to actually go like work in a museum. He has incredible knowledge about the visual arts and art history. 
Um, and it, it's just, it's really great. And he's on the right, uh, Lauren, he's on the joint committee on the arts, right? The speaker? Yes, he is. Which is, you know, really. Gee, I was so excited about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just an amazing thing to have because these are the, for those who don't understand, you know, know, not, uh, not, uh, maybe not know as intimately as like people like Lauren, Victoria and I do. I mean, the speaker of the assembly, there's a handful of people who are in major leadership positions, right? Speaker, the pro tem, which is Tony Atkins, obviously people in the administration, people who run budget, the budget committees, things like that. And so to have that type of person who, that person in that seat of power who understands how important the arts are, as he just spoke so eloquently about, is, is really a hope um, encouraging for everyone out there to recognize that we have it, it's there, we have our champion. Senator Allen, for example, is a massive champion of ours um, and, um, and, and heads up uh, the, the Joint Committee on the Arts. We have a lot of great champions, but they are beholden to their constituents. They are beholden to how many people show up and say, this is what I want you to prioritize. This is what's important in your district and for the state, et cetera, and so on. And that's why, you know, taking five minutes to send in a letter, if we ask you to do an action alert or any arts, you know, advocacy organization saying do that, it's not because we're trying to show funders that we're actually impactful. It's because we actually want to make some, some noise. We have to make enough noise. And as what um, Mayor Gloria said in the opening thing too, which is not just showing up one time. We can't just show up one time. We have to show up consistently. And we have to develop relationships. Victoria Hamilton, Victoria, you've been doing this for uh, a while now in terms of arts advocacy. Talk about the value and importance of developing those relationships in your local community and how that builds to where you get to someone as Todd Glair was. He was in the assembly. Um, sure, yeah. I've been um, <clears throat> doing this for quite some time. Um, uh, the San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture is my third uh, local arts agency I work for. Um, and and, and I, as an example, um, the, the Arts Commission was created in 1988. At the time, the commission was not in existence. The mayor and council were making, were, were not making all the arts budget decisions. So they, they wanted experts and they um, not only on staff, but on their the commission board. And here's what's interesting is that we actually have cre we created arts advocates on the city council. Many of our city council members at the at early in my uh, career in Sa San Diego have become um, senators. Um, they've been assembly members. They have gone to Washington D.C. Um, and they hold arts and cult culture up to a high degree because they get it and they understand it. And this even works with school boards. We've uh, also experienced in San Diego school board members who have been elevated um, through the political process to uh, positions of power. Um, so I encourage you all. Um, they're, uh, <laughs> they have their own stories and um, you'd be surprised how many of them actually have arts experiences or arts, um, uh, arts patrons. Um, so really get to, go, get to know your legislators. Is that what you Absolutely. were looking for, Julie? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, yeah, no, this was just meant to be an informal conversation and actually we're gonna share a couple more videos too. We do have a hard stop at 1.15 because we have to get to our next panels, but I just wanted to, Talk about the value of those relationship building. You know, you do relationship building in every aspect of your business life. Think of that at the same way in terms of civic engagement. Your city council members, your supervisors, your state assembly and state senators, your congressional people, those are all the people that um, you should have a relationship with, um, especially because you elect them. And bringing to bringing to them what is that you do, and you are the expert of what you do. They're not the expert about the arts. You are, 
um, whether it's arts and health, arts and veterans, arts and um, in mental health impact, arts uh, and you know economy, arts and jobs. Those are the things that you can share with them. So let's um, let's tee up another video. We've got Dee Dee Myers, who's a senior advisor to Governor Newsom. I actually been working closely with her on all the stuff around reopening, and she was um, willing to do a video for us for Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month. So take it away. I'm Dee Dee Myers. I'm really excited to celebrate Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month in California. Arts have sustained us through this crisis, and they will be the catalyst to a healthy, equitable, and vibrant recovery for every community in our state. The arts are truly core to our well being. They're where we find ways to express affirmation and triumph, heartfelt grief, newfound insight and wisdom. They give us hope and help us put our lives back together. They give us purpose and the determination to go on. The arts really are foundational to California's culture. They bring us together in the best of times and make our communities resilient, sustainable, and vibrant places to live and work. And in the worst of times, they allow us to recover, reflect, and build back in new, innovative, and stronger ways. Art and the creative industries are key to our state's economy, its identity, and its social fabric. They're at the core of who we are. So let's get the creative industries back to work and restart arts in California. Only then can our state really move forward to a better tomorrow for all of us. So what's important about that video is that Dee Dee Myers is in the cabinet for uh, Governor Newsom. She runs his um, department called GoBiz, which is business and economy. Um, and so you have now a senior state official saying, we need the arts to restart and rebuild California. And, and that is an important thing for us to be not only to be recognized in that way, but hopefully this translates into things like the billion dollar investment. It certainly is translated into finally getting reopening guidelines, uh, which we know took a long time for our sector to receive uh, if you're in the live events portion of it. So, so that's, you know, the, and, and in terms of relationship building, I've been developing a relationship with Didi in that office over the last several months or six months, whatever it is, building trust and partnership around reopening to the point where then when I asked like, would you say something? She not only during that process learned so much about our sector because we brought a bunch of people to the table um, who were experts in uh, the events industry um, in particular for the arts events. Um, but she really saw that we, I'll give you a really good example. On Sunday night, I don't even think Victoria knows this, I was invited into a very small group with the head of Cal OSHA um, here in the state to learn about what they're doing in terms of the emergency uh, procedures that they're going to be changing soon. It was manufacturing, agriculture, transportation, hotels, and the arts. We were invited to the table. It was one of the first times that I felt like we were being recognized as an industry, right? That's really, really important uh, for us to be seen in that way. So all, uh, we're getting there, we're making developments. And I think if you're in the beginning opening session, we were talking about that, how important that is to make that those coalition connections, but to really be seen as an industry. It, we're really diverse. It's not as easy as restaurants. It's not as easy as hotels in that sense. Um, but we can get there and um, we can really pull that ecosystem together. And when we do, man, oh man, are we going to change the world? So who's up next? I think Assembly member David Chu from San Francisco. Great one too. Hi everyone. I'm Assembly member David Chu representing Eastern San Francisco in the California State Legislature, a member of the Assembly Arts and Tourism Committee. And in my off hours, I'm an amateur musician married to an arts history major, and we are raising our son in nursery school who made this beautiful self-portrait. I'm happy to join you in commemorating April as the Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month here in California. This past year, we saw artists of all kinds lift us up during these difficult times. Murals on the sides of buildings, musicians performing from their porches, the use of technology to share art virtually, the resilience of the arts community has been incredible. 
We know the arts are the key to our culture and society, to our identity and our economy. In the best of times and the worst of times, <coughs> arts tell us who we are and who we want to become. And we need to support our artists as we all recover from this pandemic. So please join us as we celebrate our artists throughout the state and as we restart arts in California. So you can see, we obviously give them some talking points. That's how you do that. If you want them to actually do it, you give them talking points. There's staff like Lauren, who um, helps with, uh, who supports ben Senator Allen, you know, then often write uh, what they say. But a lot of times as you can see, they also make it personalize it. And that was what was so great about assembly member Chu's uh, wonderful showing of his kids artwork and how he's married to an art historian. And that's the other thing is as arts advocates, as Victoria was saying, you know, every one of them has a story to tell. There's very few people in our, in our world who don't have some connection to the arts, right? Some kind of connection to the arts. Uh, so, so part of your job when you go in and you do your meetings and you're getting to know your elected officials is to, is to figure out what is their interest and how, how can you make that connection? So I, I want to um, give someone a, a moment to introduce herself and her work, and then I've got one more video in the next six minutes we'd need to wrap. So Kathleen, why don't you introduce yourself and what you um, bring to the desk? Hi. Hi. Yeah, thanks for everyone and all you're doing, Julie. And I really resonate with um, Amy and what she had said. I work on behalf of veterans who are artists. And that when you think about the health connection and the arts connection, you know, there's 22 suicides per day or more of veterans who take their own lives. So the art for their recovery is really important. I have an initiative on that. I will put it in my contact information in the chat. Anyone that wants to um, uh, talk to me, I would be so grateful. And I am getting a lot out of this uh, seminar, Julie. So I'll be following up as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen, and, and thank you for the work that you do um, to support veterans and util utilizing arts as uh, the mechanism and, and for healing. It, it is such a such important and valuable work. So thank you for that. Um, we'll run one more video, and this is actually Senator Scott Wilk, and, the, and Senator Wilk um, is uh, the Republican leader. And one of the things I wanted to point out is the arts are bipartisan. Hi, Senator Scott Wilk. This April, we celebrate Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month in the state of California. The arts and creative industries are a keystone in, to our state's economy, identity, as well as the social fabric. Pre-pandemic, creative industries, both nonprofit and for-profit, contributed $185 billion to California's economy, representing 7% of the state's total GDP. They're also core to our personal well-being and much, much more than a hobby or something to enjoy. Studies have found that participation in the arts results in a 66% improvement in individuals experiencing depression, 50% improvement in anxiety symptoms, as well as an 83% decrease in stress. A strong arts and culture foundation unites us in the best of times and makes communities resilient, sustainable, and vibrant places to live and to work. In the worst of times, the arts do all of this and more. My own community has a deep commitment to the arts. In fact, my wife, Vanessa, serves on the Santa Clarita Arts Commission, and Santa Clarita is home to the California Institute of the Arts. I have personally seen the impact that this amazing hub of creativity has had on our own community. While we may not be able to gather in front of the Capitol with over 200 people, I join you in bringing awareness to the arts this month. Let's get the creative industry back to work and restart arts in California. Thanks a lot. So yeah, I just wanted to you know highlight that um, we like to say we put the art in bipartisan. If you look at the word bipartisan, art is in there. Um, but you know it isn't a partisan issue. This is something uh, at least in the state of California has typically typically been. Uh, support on both sides. Um, Senator Wilk actually got our Arts Champion Award in 2019 um, because he's always vote. He's been on uh, the Arts Committee and he's always voted in support of increasing uh, funding for the arts. So, you know, again, but what I think you heard from him beyond our our, our talking points, which you see in each one of their videos, uh, but that's.
that's good. You know, we got our Restart Arts California, which is part of our hashtag. We did a campaign on that. So that all of that's good. Is that what you also see is that um, each one of them has their own story and has their own personal connection to the arts. Senator Allen's mother, what she's a painter, a visual art teacher. No, oh, you're me. Yeah. There we go. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, she's a painter. And I was just typing in a note um, regarding Senator Wilk. He's been um, one of our, our longest serving um, members on the Joint Committee on the Arts, one of our most dependable. He um, always tries to be there when we have hearings and joined us on a couple of field trips we took. So um, yeah, he's, um, you know, it's great to have that across the aisle support. Absolutely, I and mean, he Our is a Republican person. leader. Yeah. He's a Republican leader right here of the Senate. So, yeah. so just, you know, again, we wanted to share with you how, uh, you know, some of our, legislative leaders um, are our biggest arts champions. And so, you know, make sure, so, so feel confident in that, but also make sure that you utilize the tools out there to make, to connect with your um, local elected officials. They want to hear from you. And if they get enough phone calls, emails, letters about a particular issue, particularly if it's in district, that gets lifted up to the Sacramento office. And they're like, hey, we're getting all these calls about, this issue, it's important in your district. So your voice does matter. Um, all right, well, we got to wrap up so we can get you all to your next sessions. We've got to go behind the scenes and get everyone started. Um, amazing uh, panels this afternoon, speaking truth to power, bending toward justice in the creative industries, or you can check out artists as essential, the creative workforce movement. Um, and uh, both of them are gonna be just amazing. And then we have a workshop. And as I mentioned, speaker Rendon will kick off the workshop with some words of wisdom, and then you'll get into some practical applications. And then at the end, we're gonna be joined by um, Senator Tony Atkins in a pre-recorded um, tribute to Larry Baza, um, who sadly just passed away from COVID, who was the chair of the California Arts Council um, and a longtime San Diego arts leader. And then we will hear from Las Cafeteras, who's a um, band from East LA that has been really active in the social justice movement and has used this last year to really engage in that way. And they'll share some really fun and uplifting videos, but powerful videos as well. So stay with us throughout the rest of the day. Join me at the end for a glass of wine or a soda or a tequila shot, whatever we, your favorite is to get through. Um, and uh, again, grateful for everyone for showing up and we work, we will work together uh, to make all of this happen. So thank you so much. Hope you had a good lunch.